Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Wine with Jimmy channel. I'm your host, Jimmy Smith, and thank you so much for stopping by. So welcome to a series of videos which is looking at wine production for the WSET Level 4 Diploma. I produce a number of videos that are there to supplement your studies to help you understand topics very important within the syllabus. So this is the Level 4 Diploma, a section called Hazards, Pests and Diseases, and this is the section on bacterial diseases, specifically looking at pierces disease. So we'll go through exactly what Pierce's disease is, we'll look at how it's spread, and then we'll look at viticultural management techniques for Pierce's disease. Okay, so as always, uh, please, if you do have any comments, questions or concerns, this is one of the free videos available on the YouTube channel, so you can comment on the comments section below, please make sure you click subscribe for two updates a week across the level three and level four WSET syllabus. Also, you can get in touch via the website, that's www.winewithjimmy.com, and that's where you'll find my e-learning portal, which is the only portal you'll need to help you with your WSET studies. There's also social media links at the bottom of every slide so you can get in touch with us by that means if you are that way inclined. Okay so as mentioned this section is actually in two parts so Pierce's disease and then we'll have grapevine yellows in a separate pre presentation. This one is available as free content on YouTube. Any um, beyond part one in all of the sections are only available on the e-learning portal. Okay, so let's have a look at what exactly Pierce's disease is. So here we go. So first of all, Pierce's disease. This is a bacterial disease that quickly kills vines. It is a big problem in North America, for instance. The disease is caused by a bacterium called Xylella fastidiosa. So what you have at the top of that, uh, on top of that slide. And so this is a gram negative bacterium that survives and multiplies in the water conducting elements of the plant. Uh, so this for the grapevine, this is the xylem. So it is found in the xylem. Now, this bacterium living in the sap channels, the xylem, uh, you'll find that it clogs. It lives in there and then it clogs. And this leads to shriveling and the dropping of leaves, as you can see in this picture, and eventual death of the vine between one to five years. Uh, so, of course, the vine isn't getting its necessary uh, nutrients and water supply due to the pretty much the arteries being clogged up. This originated on the American continent. It initially affected the southern United States of America and Central America. And today, in terms of viticulture, it is present in California. It was first described and noted in California in 1884. Um, some vine varieties are more susceptible than others. Now, because this disease is an American-based disease, think about it a little bit like phylloxera. I know phylloxera is a louse, but in terms of vines that are from the States have a little bit more protection against this. Not real good protection like phylloxera, but um, it is Vitis vinifera, our European vine species, that tend to have more susceptibility to Pierce's disease. And in terms of the vine varieties, it is said there are problems around varieties like Chardonnay and Pinot Noir specifically. Um, so there are different ones that have different susceptibility. OK, so how is Pierce's disease spread? So here we have, and I'm sorry if you are a little bit squeamish, uh, certainly with bugs and such, you've got a couple of pictures of bugs coming up. Here is one of them. I probably should have given you a warning uh, a while ago. <laughs> but this bacterium is spread by the glassy winged sharpshooter, rather catchy name. And this acts as a vector 
uh, so an organism that transmits a disease. Uh, there are other sharpshooters that can also transmit the disease as well. There's lots of different uh, blue-green, which is the part of the glassy-winged sharpshooter. There's also red and different coloured ones as well. Um, but this is found to be the most problematic for the spread of Pierce's disease as it is a vector and it can fly some larger distances. So therefore, this has led to the spread of the disease being more rapid in the 1980s and the 1990s when the real sort of uh, attention of California turned to the problems that Pierce's disease would cause. It prefers river bank habitats. Uh, so vines that are near riverbanks are more at risk. And as we mentioned, um, it really feeds on the xylem of the plants and not just vines. There's other plants as well that it will live on and trees. So it actually feeds on the xylem, feeds on that sap, and that's where it can transmit, of course, Pierce's disease. There is no chemical control for the bacterium once it is found in the vine and the exact symptoms are unclear. So vines must be tested in a laboratory uh, for certainty. But we did actually see on the last page, there are things like the yellowing and browning of leaves and there has been quite a few publications written on exactly what does happen. So that though there isn't 100% guidance on the exact symptoms, there certainly have started to be publications on this. Um, strict quarantine rules for the movement of plants have really sought to prevent the further spread of the disease um, because the treatment through chemicals is, is tough. Uh, it doesn't work so well. So of course they're looking at more natural, um, natural approaches and then quarantining and making sure that it doesn't move so much. So let's have a look at that. Let's have a look at the management of Pierce's disease. And I've actually put in a box at the bottom there, removing vines near to sharp, uh, the sharpshooters habitats, the natural habitats uh, and ecosystem controls as well. So the, the, the key thing here, the control really is key by reducing the number of the vector. So really controlling and reducing the, um, the volume of the glassy winged sharpshooter. So for example, like I mentioned previously, removing vines close to rivers has been quite effective as riverbanks, remember, are the natural habitat for the, the, uh, the glassy winged blue green sharpshooter. Um, removal of the habitat though is fairly difficult. So removing the vines, fine, but removing the habitat is an issue because this strategy must comply with federal state and local regulations because uh, of course there may be other ecosystem controls to think of uh, habitats there that you may be destroying. Um, some chemical insecticides are used but one of the biological controls is actually introducing a certain species of wasp. In fact there are a few species of wasp that have been introduced and those wasps feed on the eggs of sharpshooters. So this actually controls the population. There is one of them, I'm not going to say the name of it. I'm not great at the, um, the actual biological names of any of these, but there is a wasp for you that has been introduced in terms of uh, controlling the sharpshooters' eggs. So that brings me to a conclusion of this section on managing Pierce's disease. The next presentation is on grapevine yellows that will only be available on my e-learning portal. That's www.winewithjimmy.com and click on the link that says e-learning portal where you can sign up to watch hundreds more hours of exclusive video content across the system plus of course have access to flashcards and things like multiple choice questions short written answer questions and answers and so on it's an exceptionally useful resource for those of you studying your wset courses and it's uh, therefore level one through to level four so i've been jimmy smith of wine with jimmy Thank you so much for stopping by. If you do have any comments, questions or concerns, once again, pop your comments in this video on YouTube or get in touch via social media or by directly on the website www.winewithjimmy. 
If you do find yourself in London, make sure you come and see me at one of my bars or wine schools so you can come and see me for a class, a glass or a bottle. I've been Jimmy Smith. Thank you so much. Goodbye. Thank you.